All right, let's get started. We'll start the game. Yeah, start the recording. Yeah. All right. So we are fortunate tonight to have Dana Mann, the director of assessment, with us to discuss Article 21. Um, so I'm just going to turn it over to you. Tell us what Article 21 is all about. Certainly. Thank you for having me. Hello, member. Um, those that don't know me, my name is Dana Mann. I'm the director of assessments. Um, so this past November, the uh, town uh, voted in favor of a new um, residential exemption, uh, generally referred to as the circuit breaker exemption, as opposed to the uh, Massachusetts uh, circuit breaker income credit that's available on your income tax return. Uh, but it, it, it's uh, very similar in the way that it works. In fact, um, essentially, if you qualify at the state level, you qualify at the town level with a few, very few caveats. Um, this uh, warrant article was introduced uh, in relation to the funding for that exemption. Uh, it's fairly new. There are only a half a dozen towns that have this exemption in place, and they've had to file special legislation to do it. Um, recently, however, the uh, Governor's uh, Empowerment Act is looking to make this um, uh, more simplified uh, local option uh, that wouldn't require the special legislation that, that we've adopted. Um, but the funding for this exemption uh, is, is drawn on only the residential class. Um, and the way that it works is the amount of the exemption is determined. That amount is deducted from the value of the residential class while maintaining the same uh, levy for the residential class, which will result in a different tax rate. Because of that, <clears throat> uh, and a little bit of understanding of the political environment, uh, it might be um, it, it might be a better idea to uh, maintain a single tax rate, which the town of Arlington has done historically, um, by uh, debiting the amount of the exemption or the exemption amount uh, from the overlay account. That was the thinking. Um, it was early on in the project when we were discussing this. Um, and certainly as we learn more, um, it becomes a little bit apparent that the amount of the exemption might exceed what we would consider um, using that method for. But we thought that it should be put in play and be an option to consider. Um, what it does, so what this what this uh, warrant does is it, it adds a line um, that's uh, taken from another town's special legislation uh, where they have uh, the option to debit that amount, the exemption amount, from their overlay account. Um, I have a copy of our legislation here. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't bring copies for everyone, uh, but I'm happy to pass these along. Okay. And I'll just, I'll read from our special uh, act, uh, which is, um, if you want to look this up on the internet, it's uh, from the acts of 2020. And it's chapter 285. 
If you Google that, you'll find it. Um, Let me read from the Hingham Act first, which is uh, the same uh, Acts of 2020, Chapter 381. Um, and its, it's um, wording regarding the funding mechanism is um, the total amount exempted by this Act shall be uh, one allocated proportionally within the residential tax levy on all residential taxpayers or funded by an appropriation or transfer from existing funds while not exceeding 1% of the municipality's tax levy. And I'll just find... <clears throat> oh, yeah. um, no exemption shall be granted under this act until the Department of Revenue certifies a residential tax rate for the applicable, applicable tax year where the total exemption amount is raised by a burden shift within the residential tax levy. Uh, but essentially our, our act does not allow for the funding of this through the overlay account. It must be raised in the tax rate on the residential class. And that's essentially all that warrant article does. Any that's questions? Good. Yeah. So I was trying to understand sort of the timeline of what town meetings role in this. And so it sounds to me like you're saying the exemption for senior citizen tax, you know, the tax relief is definitely happening. And this is about where the money comes from. From mm -hmm. and can get it from that overlay. Right. And then are you saying if we don't pass this, then say a person's home is worth eight hundred thousand dollars, you tax them as though their home were worth less, or you apply a different tax rate to the same value of home. So the, the way that the exemption is computed yeah. is the select board will establish a percentage between 50 and 200% of what the person qualified for in their income taxes or would have qualified. Um, and the way that they qualify is the difference between uh, their real estate tax and half of their water tax bill the amount that that exceeds 10% of their income would be their uh, income credit. And the select board would vote a percentage of that income credit. So if someone uh, was awarded $1,000 by the state because of the difference between their income and, and what they paid in taxes and that half of the water bill. Uh, the select board would vote a percentage of that, 50% or $500 or 200, up to 200% or $2,000. It doesn't come to the overlay. If this does no. not, where does it come? It's raised in the tax rate by the residential class. Carolyn and I'm What does that mean to the rest of the residential class? The tax rate on the residential class would be increased by an amount to fund 
the amount of the exemptions. Would that happen annually? Would that happen? So if you own the property, you would have your tax bill, but then at some point you would be given another bill that would be the difference? No. Um, the bills would be the same. What would change is the tax rate for the residential flat. Um, so by 0.02%? Uh, so I did a few calculations. I determined what we would expect for numbers. Uh, estimates only. Yeah. There's no hard numbers. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and what I came up with was um, an estimate of 600 um, properties that would qualify. And based on numbers uh, from the state that indicated that uh, Arlington had approximately 700 um, properties or taxpayers in uh, 1921, and the average of the uh, discounts or the uh, the credit was uh, nine hundred ninety eight dollars. So that comes out to about um, sixty eight million dollars in value that would be exempted. And when you estimate what that would do to the tax rate, um, I come up with a figure of five cents using last year's numbers. So instead of the residential taxpayers paying $10.59, their tax rate would be uh, $10.64. Per thousand dollars of value. Yes, thank you. For everybody or just those people? No, for the entire residential tax class. Everybody else. Everybody else. No. All, all residential taxpayers. Oh, okay. So including those, so including those who are getting the breaks. Okay. All right. Um, Charlie and then Annie and then So um, how many people, I'm not sure you just said this or not, but how many how many residences or how many households would qualify for this new exemption? Yeah, we're estimating, Kylie. There's no um, no hard figures. So we estimate that there was, well, based on the number from 1921, there were probably... 2021, sorry. Um, we had 700 people who qualified at the state level. So but, is, this, but, is this exemption high? Is it in addition to the current state exemption or substitutional? It's in addition to. So um, it's based on the on the credit that you can receive from the state, but it's applied on your tax bill towards your um, real estate tax. Is the circuit breaker credit you're talking about? The state circuit breaker? No. <laughs> so the state circuit breaker is a credit on your income taxes, but the number, let's say that you had a credit of $1,000, um, that would be your uh, amount that you would be applying for at the town level. And if you were, we found that you were qualified, that's the amount that would, would be reduced from your taxes, $1,000. Anything else, Charlie? No, thank you. So, so it's basically, whatever your tax credit is, an equal amount comes off your- Well, the, the, the percentage, I'm sorry, not an equal amount, but whatever percentage the select board determines. So they're going to vote on 50%, 100%, 150% or 200%. Percent of your credit. Mm -hmm. Percent of your, of your state, state credit. Yes. 
So Correct. If, if we're $1,000 and we voted 100%, then you get $1,000 off your tax. That's right. Thank you. Okay. So 750 people qualified at the state level in 2021. So we don't get an annual report of that from the state? That's the latest uh, year that we have numbers for. Okay. And that figure includes renters. Which would not be qualified at the town yeah. level. Okay, and the renters, landlords, don't get to apply for the credit on behalf of their tenants and apply to the renter. They do. They do. They do. Okay, so if I'm renting and I have a thousand dollar income credit from the state, my landlord could request the reduction in their property taxes on the building I live in, do they have to pass it through to me? As long as they own it. Yeah. Um, they do not have to pass it through. Okay. They qualify on their own uh, income. Their okay, own income, but not, not, not mine as the rent. Yeah. Right. Okay, so, so the 750 households that qualify at the state, they have to apply for that, don't they? Oh, yes. Okay. So, do we only know the qualification of the people who applied, or do we just know that they qualify? Do we know? Like, in other words, if they have to apply to the state and they don't, they don't show up on our radar. Uh, they can apply to right. us, even though they don't or didn't apply to the state. To the state. But they have to prove their income Qualification. So same qualification that they can apply to us even if they haven't applied to the state. Okay. Yes. So in other words, they would have to apply one place or the other. There isn't any automaticity to this. We're not automatically no. applying it. And if they apply to the state and they get the credit, they still have to tell us. Yes. They applied and were successful in order for us to give them the credit. They have to apply. Right. 750 people. Do we know how much credit those 750 people got? So we the average credit that they received yep. in 2021 yep. um, was that $998 number. So roughly a thousand dollars average credit. So $750,000 and $750,000 roughly was the total amount. Okay. And we could either do some something less than seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, or we could do up to two hundred percent of that, which would be one point five million dollars. And the way that we there are two ways we can pay for that. One is for by applying to be able to give it to them out of other funds that we have, and the other is to slightly raise the tax rate for everybody so we collect that much more money and then credit it back to them and still get our income. Well, except that right now the yep. only uh, method. Right. that we have yep. is through the tax rate. Right. And what we are saying with this article is we want more, we want other methods for paying for this. We want to consider another option. Yes. Got it. So it doesn't change how much credit we're giving people. <laughs> it doesn't change how much tax we're collecting to cover that credit. It doesn't change anything, just the source of the money. Well, it might change how much we're raising the tax rate. Yes, right. So uh, the, the significant difference um, between raising it in the tax rate versus if we had the option to raise it via the overlay is that in the tax rate, we're only applying it to the residential class. Right. In the overlay, we would be collecting the funds through the entire so town. For commercial exam. Yes. Okay, except that we have a very tiny commercial base. Yeah. So it's probably not a significant no. difference. No. And we couldn't do 100% of this credit out of the overlay every year for very long before we had eaten up the overlay. So we, we still have to fund. Mm -hmm. what, what this... Before we realized the size of the exemption, in other words, when we were considering this, um, we didn't, we hadn't uh, determined the size of the exemption. 
हमारा um, it's appearing more and more that we would use the overlay rarely right but it's an option okay so it could pull on the toolbox yes but it doesn't change the math great thank you john and then josh and then Hi, yes, Hi. a couple quick questions. So first of all, I think uh, effective January 1st, 2023, they're going to double the circuit breaker taxes available. So I feel like that means that we're going to have to lower the percentage that we allow. That's up to the select. So board. maybe just a couple things that jumped in my head. Is a lot more people may be applying for the circuit breaker tax. Mm -hmm. They may allow us to not, because they used to cap out at like 1,200. Now it's going to cap out at 2,500. So a lot more people might come out and Five of that, so also we might have a lot more people showing up tax, property tax rates too. True. So I do see on the ballot question, it, it seems like everywhere I read this, it's always capped one percent of our tax. So I assume is this is this when you and the only thing that 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 is at the discretion of the town is the percentage of the circuit rate tax that we're going to give give the folks. Uh, so. Is everything kind of locked in when you set that percentage? In other words, you know everybody in the town. Like right now, you said 700, 990 each. Okay, but when you set that percentage, whether it's 50 or 40 or 90 percent, is that are those numbers locked in? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Ian, I think it was Andy that mentioned that, that there's a timing aspect to this that has to be worked out. We will have to collect the applications and determine eligibility before the select board uh, needs to decide a percentage. Yep. Because we will have to recommend uh, or indicate where uh, that percentage of the levy is. Yeah, it can't be just like a little bit of an unknown because you all of a sudden you could be giving away our tax base. Yeah. yeah. And then Got it. And then the quick follow-up question. So if I understand, turning back a little bit, when you talk about the default method, the default method when you're shifting the tax rate. So, well, I, I call it the default method, and unless we use the overlay or unless we get the, the warrant pass or something like that. But the default method is um, these folks are qualified, their tax rate goes down a little bit. And by that same amount, I mean, they're getting money back. You, some, you can say the tax rate goes down a little bit, but they're paying fewer or less property tax. Yes. Everybody else's property taxes go up by the same amount. Yes. So the, the town of Arlington's tax base is actually staying identical. Yes. In, in other words, the levy does not change. We raise the same amount of money. Yeah. Regardless. And um, I do, I wonder if, um, I assume this is all state legislation and everything, but I feel like the folks whose rates go up a little bit, all of a sudden their rates are going up higher than two and a half percent, higher than the override. So I assume that's legal. <laughs> Obviously it is, but it's just so everyone knows you, right. our property tax rates are going to go up higher than the two and a half percent, no, higher no, than the seven no, million dollars. No, no, the two and a half percent is yes. an increase in the levy. The total increase in the levy can't go up to two and a half percent. Your individual tax can't. Yeah, but yeah, so everyone else, it'd be, so the levy's gonna, the levy's still gonna comply with two and a half percent. Yeah. But some folks' rates are gonna go down, some folks' rates are gonna go up. So I, I, I think that we're saying the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yep, you're right, we're saying the same thing. Thank you. Yep. Everyone's rates is going to go up the same. Um, everyone's rate is going to go up the same. Um, and, and some will qualify for the exemption and receive a, an, an exemption, an exempted amount, yep. discounted from their tax, real yep. estate tax. Yep. yep, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I guess if I could just say it, say it a different way, so I make sure I understand. <clears throat> and a, I mean, obviously, people voted for both the override and for the research breaker token. We collectively, as a town, decided to do that. Um, <clears throat> I think what you're saying is, if let's say my tax bill was currently Ten thousand dollars, but I was eligible for credit, so maybe my bill would go down to nine thousand because actually reduced my property value. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of do a quick calculation. If there's seven hundred fifty people, about a thousand seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, we're kind of issuing as a credit. 
And if you divide that by the remaining households, about 19,000 or whatever, it adds about $36 each household remaining. So just before we panic too much, I mean, the, the scope of this thing, unless I've got this wrong. No, uh, not like this very I, I did some back of the envelope math and I'm coming up with um, $50 a year um, for the average single family home. Right. That would be their increase to make up for the credits. Which right. I think it's, that's exactly what people voted for. So that's great. Michael. And I think you started off by saying that you were thinking that having the option of applying overlay to this was, I think, rather generally, the way you wanted to go. Can, can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So <clears throat> it, once you understand the what I think um, is the mechanics of this, where um, assuming the town does not want to have a higher tax rate for residents than commercial property. Um, there is a, an option that the state allows called classification, which allows you to shift some burden of the residential levy to mm -hmm. the commercial, industrial, and personal property tax base. And uh, in theory, you could, if, if you needed, to, if the residential class was set to go up by five cents, you could calculate an amount that would be shifted from the residential levy to the industrial, commercial, and personal property levies in the, that, would, that would equate to five cents. Uh, but there's um, quite a bit involved in doing that. Mm -hmm. And that. Uh, debiting the, the overlay would be a much uh, simpler uh, mechanical process. And yet it could run out. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not saying the funding uh, would be any different, really, right. other than, um, well, actually, if you shifted, if you shifted burden, the funding amount is the same. Right. But it's going to be like the nickel gallon rise on gasoline. It's going to be in lights. It's going to be lit up 24 hours a day. Uh -huh. Okay. The other, only other question I had is that will the process for applying for this be explicitly explained somewhere on the town's website, your page, somewhere else? Um, we do have um, a summary. Um, that's on our website, and we're currently working on the application that will be we're, we're, that will be available in July. Yeah, because I have found the application for for um, uh, applying for a rebate on on the property tax you know, overall bill to be very hard to figure out. It's written. Uh, rather aggressively against the applicant, and I, I think it puts people off. I think you're referring to the abatement. Yes, I am. That application is essentially state uh, determined. We use the state version of the abatement application. So it's a blanket line on the state version that says, we are obligated by law to render a decision in this much time but we want you to give us two more months right now off the top. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Every application for a tax abatement includes the checkoff box saying, saying, although the law says that we have to get back to you in a certain amount of time, we want, we want two more months. Please say yes. At the point of asking the town for something, the town is also saying, oh, and we can't possibly comply in the amount of time that, that uh, the law says we have to respond to you. I find that off-putting. Let's let's uh, focus. Let's that. focus on Article Twenty One. Yep. Yep. Well, this is the means of putting it into action. Um, I'm done. I'll, I'll talk. Okay. So the bottom line is, this will have no impact 
on the total amount of money that the town has to raise and expend on its budgets. Okay. Does the selectmen vote the percentage each year? Yes. Okay. And finally, what's the status of this? Because it's already up on the website. So when the people voted last November for this, did that, because it seemed to me like this needed to amend state law. So are you just assuming this is going to go through or is the law already in place when the people voted on it in November? Which, which law? Well, um, the, uh, we, we passed a referendum in November. And you, you, yes, an act allowing this exemption, yes. Okay, did that need to be approved by the legislature? That was written by the legislature. Okay, so in effect, the referendum, the citizens voted to accept that law. Yes. So what this is doing is modifying the law which already exists. Requesting a modification, yes. Thank you. Karen? So I'm, I'm still uh, confused about one thing. And, and if we use the overlay to fund this, uh, and we don't have enough money in the overlay to cover our liabilities, how do we solve that problem? So every year, the uh, town uh, administration uh, creates a budget. In that budget is an amount to fund overlay. So that has to increase. That would now that and, would have to increase so at, if, at some point. And if yeah. the, so following that logic, uh, if we have to increase the appropriation to the overlay and we keep the the overlay surplus constant for the sake of this discussion, and we're paying using the overlay to pay for this, <coughs> then the only solution is to reduce town expenses. By seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So I calculated seven hundred sixty thirty two. Roughly, roughly. Or or um, use the uh, funding mechanism through the tax rate. No, I'm saying uh, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But if we don't use the funding mechanism through the tax rate, then can we take the overlay? And we're emptying the overlay out, so we have to increase the overlay to keep uh, the reserve there to pay for those abatements or whatever we use it for. Correct. Then we have to reduce the expenses in the town. Okay. Right? I mean, I, I think that's the only other place we can come to. Come to that's out of my realm. Uh, but... No, I, I'm not asking you to make that decision. I'm just saying, am I right in saying that that's the only other place you can get the money for the overlay? Uh, you have to produce a budget that says... Uh... The total taxes, the total taxes we raise is not going to change. Right? right, that's fixed. So we take the money out of the overlay and we go below the whatever the, the, the wise gurus say we have to have there, right? Mm -hmm. So if to meet that minimum overlay requirement, and we, we're not going to change the taxes, then we have to reduce tax yes. expenses. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Rebecca. Um, this is just going back to uh, whether it's clear who qualifies and how much they qualify for. I just wanted to point people to the, you held up a piece of paper, but the, the website from the assessor's office, I found actually very helpful. Um, there's a little PDF that will explain to you who's qualified, how they, there's little examples, if this is how much your house is worth, and this is how much you get for the circle center. So if you look on the assessor's webpage under real estate impressions, um, it says details available here. Uh, I found it very helpful. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay. also okay. Um, um, this sort of relates to Charlie's question. So before the select board sets the tax rate, you or somebody calculate an amount of exemptions. Yeah. And then that feeds in to raise the tax rate and nickel or whatever. Is that a calculation based on actual from the previous year or is it an estimate of next year's exemptions? Where's that number? No. How, how precise is that number? It's exact. It's exact. So based we'll on have previous all the, years, based on on the current year's applications, 
Okay. We determine qualification and we, we determine the amount, total amount of the exemptions. And then we'll calculate uh, if the select board uh, elects 50%, we'll, we'll tell them what that amount of money will be that will have to be raised. Okay, so so there's no chance of underestimating and um, not raising it enough or overestimating and raising it too much. Where I was gonna go is if, 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 if raising it too much or not enough, where's the difference come? But it sounds like if it's an exact calculation, it's gonna be exact. Unless I make a mistake. What if you make a mistake? Uh, oh, it comes out of your paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, probably over. Right? Yeah. So, okay. If you have this option to use the overlay, can you mix your metaphors? Can you do some of it from shift from attack shift and some of it from using the overlay? That's an excellent question. Uh, we, we don't know the answer to that right now. Okay. Um, we'll have to look into that. Okay. And so one of the things that you said was that if we have this option, you're spreading the cost across other tax classes, but not because we get to collect more money, right? So we collect the same amount of money and even if we are shifting some of the tax burden to other people in the residential class, it's the same amount of money. And the exemption is in the same expense regardless of where we take it from. Correct. So we are still having to raise the tax rate in order to get, in order to fill the overlay. It's just that we are raising the tax rate for all classes, not just the residential class. That's right. Got it. Jennifer, did you have a hand up? Actually, I was adding that was my Who decides which method you're going to use? Well, you know, the you know, I have no problem if if we're balancing this out and 90% of the people are rate paying a little bit more and that benefits the other 10%, fine. But if we start to talk about use of overlay and things like that, um, or uh, funded by an appropriation or transfer from existing funds while not exceeding, now we're impacting the town's budget. Who decides all this? Um, the Board of Assessors um, would be responsible for uh, release from the overlay of any exemption as, as they do now. But who decides if we're going to compensate by raising the tax rate to pay for this, or we're going to take it out of the overlay? Is that a recommendation from the assessors to the selectmen? Yes. So the selectmen have the final say? Yes. Just it, it'll be determined in the classification hearing where the assessors make recommendation or make information available for the select board to make a decision. Why, why do we need this foreign order? What, what's the purpose? It says, or funded by an appropriation of transfer from existing funds while not exceeding. Why do we need that language if we're gonna raise it within the residential tax rate? Well, if we wanted an option, we would have to have that language. Right now, our only course of action is to increase the residential tax rate. Why would we not want to do that? It, it's ap appearing more and more, Al, as we uh, learn more about this exemption and, and, uh, and, and look at the numbers more closely, that that may be a preferable. May be a preferable. Uh, choice to raise the tax rate. Raise the tax rate on the residential okay. class, but my uh, thinking is is just to provide an option here. And if we don't want to provide you with that option, then we should vote against this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Topher and Grant. 
Yeah, so first, um, so we'll, the select board will have a hearing on this form article. I imagine. I, yes. Okay. I mean, it would go to them. Yes. You know, we're asking questions. Yeah, I'll hold them. And then going back to you know, talking about renters, um, it seems to me that, so the renters don't really file, factor into it, right? It's the landlord, they have a building, they apply for the state exemption on their own, they qualify for it. And it really is disconnected from whether any renter qualifies or not, right? It's the landlord's situation that, that would dictate that. So you have to have ownership to apply. Right, right. right. For the residential tax. Yes. Right, you have to be the owner, but your your renters might have qualified for the state thing, and they might not have. It doesn't mean not. It's all so, just on the landlord. Okay. Right. Uh, it's nice that if you patient enough, people are asking the same questions I have, so and probably better than I would. Um, I, this is more a question about the process or the flow because it's helped me fill in the blind. So, um, if this happens, then um, People apply, residents apply, owners apply. Uh, there's a deadline, I assume. Yes. Um, then there's a review period to see if they're eligible or not. Yes. And then is that when you make a re and then you make a recommendation to the selectman about the percentage? Well, I will tell them what each of the their percentage options would equate to for each of the applicants. No. In, in mass. In mass. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, then they would approve that, for, uh, presumably. They'll select a percentage. Right, right, right. Probably based on the recommendation. And um, then what happens? Then people are notified, or poof, the, magic, the miracle occurs, or what? <laughs> well, uh, yes. Generally, we provide mm -hmm. notification of exemption uh, awards. Um, once we know the amount, uh, it'll either be in a letter form. Um, we we haven't got that far. Okay. Uh, but it will be the exemption will be uh, reduced from their third quarter bill. Okay, and which, I which comes out in late December, early January. I understand. It also, might be an exercise that might be totally futile because it doesn't. Get on no no need to figure out that part of it. Okay. Thank you. Other questions. Hey. So where in that process does the uh, determination as to where the money comes from? Is it like do you, if we add this to your toolbox, when is that decision made based on it would have to be made in a classification hearing. From December. Yeah. And okay. So in time for the third quarter. Well, yes. Quarterly. Okay. That has to happen before we can set the tax rate. Other questions. Mike. Thank you for making something rather complex, much more understandable than I started out with tonight. And Rebecca, thank you for taking a look mm -hmm. at website on the procedure that's uh, I'll have to look at that but thank you for that um what happens if you don't get your own water bill what if you live in a condominium unit and your association gets one bill that is apportioned to all the units as i said uh you either are qualified at the state level or if you do not uh apply at the state level you're responsible for proving your qualification in the application. So it's the same question. No. Um, it's an excellent question. I don't have an answer for you tonight. Grant. Thank you. It's going up a bit. Wouldn't that then be, instead of the 50% of the water bill, wouldn't there be a some percentage of the condo maintenance fee bill or something would that make there are there is information on this that the state has worked that out um i don't have that language in front of me so, right so 
and it's not in the warrant. No, no, the warrant doesn't contain anything regarding qualification um, or amounts of, of exemption. Um, so how does that, it may not matter, I don't know how many people qualify that own condos of 750, how many of them own condos that they do. It's only half their water bill that they're getting in, a, in inequity. And so I don't think it really matters too much. So thank you. Sorry, I couldn't answer that tonight, but uh, the, the information is uh, at the state level uh, and we would we would apply the same rules. So big mouth, thank you. Any other questions? I just want to follow up on Al Tosti's question. So right now you can, right now we can achieve this with the existing law through the tax rate. Yes. What you're looking for is the ability to also do the same thing with using the overlay. And that's yes. what this is for. Tell me, help me understand exactly why that would be beneficial using the overlay would be, be more beneficial than what we have now. The primary uh, reason would be to maintain our historic uh, single tax rate. And that's it. That, that's the one and only one thing. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you. Me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Welcome. Thank you. Should have brought you my three ABCs. I'm saving you from the most. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do the next one. Okay. Is this your code? No. No. Oh, it's out. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we're doing the minutes from the last minute. Minute making. This twenty six. Um, I have a question on item three, couple four. Okay. The third line parks and recreation is no longer covering cost of portable toilets. I think they are, right? They are. No, they are. They are. They are. They are. Yeah. yeah. They're not covering other fuel Sorry. costs. They, theory, oh, but they're covering the portable. Yeah. yeah, we have we actually get yeah. some updates. Okay. okay. So um, I think if you want the minutes to reflect what we discussed at the meeting, at the meeting the concern was they were only the suggestion right. was made yes. at the meeting that they were yeah. only covering. Oh, yeah. yes. However, However that, that is not technically correct, which we will go into later. Yeah. Okay. So you could I'll you, just strike it. You could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds good. Right. If you wrote only, it would accurately reflect what was suggested at the meeting. Oh, yeah. However, okay. that's not completely correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. The word only nation. <laughs> So you so you're correct that it was not that they're no longer doing it, yeah. it's that they are. Yeah. Um, the concern was that they weren't also covering other forms of field maintenance. So is it correct to say, both in terms of what we discussed at the meeting and what you know now, that parks and rec is covering the cost of affordable products? That is correct. Mm -hmm. right. So yes. let's just strike no longer. So the parks and rec is covering. Okay. Um, anybody see anything else? Um, can you spell that for What's that? Can you spell that? Yeah, sorry. Well, update the numbers. You know, probably next week. Is the right time to do that. See anything, Barbara? All right. Anybody have any other corrections to the minutes? All right. 
Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any other? All right, I think we have a parking budget, right? Yes, let's handle this in three parts. First, there's the budget book, then moving on to the actual parking fund budget that town treasurer Julie Wayman provided me and, and us and met with her a couple of Fridays ago. Oh, Tyler will get that up. The first part of what we'll look at is uh, in the budget books. Um, 67 is the title page, 68 and 9 are, are the details for what they request. And it's a rather uh, short story here because only one employee is directly tied into. <clears throat> Parking budget. At the top of page uh, 68 here. Um, salary and wages for that one employee does go up 8.8%. That's both the result of uh, principally it's reclassification. Uh, one employer classified from staff four to five. Uh, no longevity, uh, no stipends. The parking expenses are rather spare also. Printing uh, for the physical tickets with our better issue. Yeah. Contractual services basically for the uh, handheld ticketing devices, which uh, Treasurer was excited uh, to tell me that the uh, contract is now with a local company, a Massachusetts company, Kelly and Ryan, which has which has a great customer service, responsiveness, and an interesting funding strategy. You pay them two dollars a ticket for for the tickets that are issued through through those handheld devices that our that our traffic officers use. Um, the offset offset is about is a Figure to add fifty percent of the one employee's salary. The very top line there on page sixty-nine. And my first question when I went to meet with Julie was, "Is that offset figure uh, <coughs> reliable year to year that, that we'll have that through through?" parking expenses. And I got my eyes open sharply uh, to the amount of money that actually comes in from parking. Yes, yes. a definitive yes. <laughs> definitive yes to the point of our, our conversation eventually moved on to the topic of, well, should more uh, of the uh, uh, relatable costs of parking, parking enforcement be offset by more money coming out of what is received from these parking figures. But I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, parking fund budget is broken down. Yeah, parking fund budget is broken down by uh, uh, sources. Single space, multi-space meter, meters, those are the new ones that we just bought. We didn't buy them, we own them. So I was asking about the mechanical reliability of these. Uh, they're standing up very well <coughs> so far. Um, it does take six punches to get your free 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Choose space, punch, choose 15 minutes, punch. You know, it well, used to be one, now it's six, but you can still get your 15 minutes free. Um, they recharge through solar energy. Is that reliable, I ask? Yes. Uh, manufacturer says they get probably three to four days of battery life with no sun at all. When will that... Uh, be exceeded. The only time that's exceeded is if you have somebody take a snowblower down Broadway Plaza and bury the meter tops, because then they'll be out of action for as long as that top of the meter is covered with snow. So, so be a good civic citizen. If you see a little snow cone of snow on top of one of the parking meters, just just bump it off and and let the meter recharge. 
They are projecting the uh, FY24 is actual numbers based on about six months. The projected for FY25 is the 422, 422,000 plus. So yes, well enough to cover 50% of one person in the of one person in the treasurer's office. Julie told me though that the amount of work that gets done on on parking issues alone is more than one full time equipment. So there's an argument there. Should we should we choose to you know discuss it any further? Of perhaps more money should be drawn out of the bottom the reservoir, the number the number that it all ends up with. Coming out of the parking fund, does this slide oh, up when I, I try? I have to do it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I thought it would go with you. Let's slide it up with expenditures. Expenditures, um, the big drop in projected expenditure, the first line of expenditure, principally because of coin collection. We are trying to move away from the technology of a wheeled cart down the street and the coins getting dumped into the cart. The more people that use, use these, uh, meters by credit card, um, there'll be you know, a slight increase in, in uh, the you know, charges for, for, for the processing there, but the cost of actually collecting buckets and buckets of coins is expected to go down. I'm not sure where the projected expense for the charging stations is. That's a somewhat notional expense, as were uh, a couple of others here. Um, Benefits to the uh, Russell Common Lot. Uh, I asked him, Julie said, well, like, like the hardscaping, pavement, curves, things like that. Okay, but again, nothing that's been committed to yet. The, so call it notional, cause it, call it, you know, we've got the money, why don't we do something with it? Uh, some of these are more um, uh, certain to be recurring from year to year, trash collection, plantings. I love seeing that there's an actual line item in there for watering the plants so that we get back the value of our investment in, in the plants themselves. Um, elect electric upgrades, again, that's a number thrown in for, for foreseen work, as well as you know decorations for 200, 250th anniversary of Patriot's Day, uh, seasonal decorations, a bump there. Um, streetscape improvements. The streetscape improvements are tied to the fact that the meters are funding a parking benefit district. And some of that money, it's not quite the way um, a revolving fund works, but something of the same same spirit here. The money comes in from an area, the money goes back to the same area. And I think right down to the totals here, looking at total expenditure, provisionally based on throwing in some line items of expenses that haven't come up in the past and don't necessarily have to come up in the future either. They're uh, last year's uh, parking fund to budget had uh, repairs to the uh, railroad lot parking area and uh, sidewalk repairs on Old Mystic Street, which didn't happen. They just they just didn't happen. The money wasn't expensed. Uh, so we have a surplus in hand right now, even with a greater than um, projected revenue figure for things to be done with that money, it, it is projected that we will end up with a fund, money in our pocket, over half a million dollars of accumulated savings of parking revenue in versus expenses paid out. Third part of what I want to talk about then is, is this what we should be doing, carrying half million dollars in a parking fund with a certain number of um, recurring expenses tied to it, but not nearly the number that it would take to, to run the whole balance. Yeah, you, 
ready for questions right now, or do you want to keep going? Uh, just one, just one more word on it. Um, policy is set by a parking advisory committee, like just about every other committee in the town. It's a committee of the usual suspects, a representative of the select board or the transportation advisory committee of the chamber of commerce, um, and and these are people who who have day to day, you know, hands on knowledge of these things. Julie Myrak, the chamber uh, selectman Hurd, um, Leland. Uh, Leland Stein, general manager of the Region Theater, as, as a member of the Chamber of Commerce and a local business person here. Um, so they advise the treasurer on how to put more things in this expenditure column. But my step back view of it was, okay, this number, even though we're, we're projecting to spend you know, a good 20% more than we did last year coming out of it, the, the money is mounting up and but but that's that's projected based upon a number of things that we don't have to spend the money on and from last year's uh from last year's practice there was um eight thousand almost a hundred thousand dollars that was in the projected expenditures from last year that didn't get spent so i'm just looking at the practice here and wondering you know do we are we go are we good? Is this the way we want to see it look? Do we have any recommendations to make? Do we think that we can sail closer to the wind on on you know what this parking money is is spent for a little bit more you know tightly tied to things? That's really the uh, presentation that I have. I move that we vote pursuant to the bottom line number on page sixty nine, taxation number thirty four thousand eight hundred. Ninety-six dollars. No, 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 sorry, is that do I have that wrong? Yeah, go yeah, up to the bottom. Thank you. I'm trying to talk and speak, talk and talk and read at the same time. Yeah, it doesn't always work. Move fifty-seven thousand one hundred two to be raised. Second. Second. All right. So. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that we created this parking benefit district as an act of town meeting, and that the parking meter revenue is dedicated to that fund. It's like it is like a revolving fund. We, as the select, as the finance committee, can't change the policy. Town meeting would have to change the policy. Somebody would file a warrant article. And the idea here was that the people who were taking the risk of us putting in the meters. Mm -hmm. Or the businesses, it was changing their lives, the ability yep. of their clients to park for longer than a half an hour without putting more money in here, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And we sold it to them as this will benefit you, and it gives us a pot of money with which to improve our commercial districts, which in theory should attract more commercial mm -hmm. activity, so on and so forth. So um, I'm not sure that we can change anything about it, although I suppose we can make the policy recommendation we can think about it we can we can recommend uh Tarifi, scroll up for one more thing here um i'm looking especially at the uh, expenditure line parking enforcement and administration uh that could well be increased more money out of the parking meters going into uh, the police department budget <clears throat> Awesome. Um, I mean, one way we could reduce revenues is to make the charging free for what your car says. has nothing to do with the fact that I don't know what your car. I'm just trying to help you. Uh, one Civic. question I do have, though, is last year, I can't remember when, the Board of Selectmen made it free uh, for uh, senior citizens. So, you know, my pile of quarters that I always had stacked in my car, I don't use anymore. And I'm wondering, yeah. has that, it must have an impact on the revenues from the uh, parking. Has that shown up? Have they forecast that? I didn't get a uh, specific number on that. I got summary numbers from the types of uh, you know, sources of parking money collected. Yeah. But um, there wasn't a, an intercalculation of had we not waived so much money for this many people for that amount of time, it would have been different. I didn't get that. Yeah. 
because there's more and more people over, I think it's 60, figure this out. You know, the, the revenues could, I don't take a big dive, but could go down. Can I ask a question related to that? It's your question. How, how, do, how does the meter people figure out that it's it's bigger? Yeah. 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 Sticker. Yeah. 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 Sticker. Yeah. So it's not the handicap sticker; it's a different sticker. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you, you, you just you can't do something illegal like park in front of a fire hydrant, but you can basically park next to a meter in the parking lot. And and, and how old do I have to be? Yeah. Oh, I think it's <laughs> positive. <laughs> That's only if you're there for more than fifteen minutes. Uh, right. I only qualified last year. So and, and, and like Andy said, the uh, the real motivation for having any kind of charge for parking in this you know downtown yeah. business district is to make sure that it doesn't become employee parking for eight or nine hours a day for the employees of the business of the area businesses and making all these spaces unavailable to to uh, passersby and and customers who come to come to the business. <laughs> Yeah. Although I can tell you as a resident of the parking benefit district that the day-to-day -day parkers who park all day long simply have moved further outside to, to the streets radiating uh, off the off the north side uh, of, of Broadway Plaza. That was the idea. Um, yeah, a uh, quick question and then comment. Um, the question is about the track magnet, which disappears. So that's no longer um, an expense. Yeah. Who's managing the trash now? The trash management? No, I don't know. So that's one question. Okay, so, and then the oh. comment is that from talking to Mike Brademacher, um, some of this money sometimes is used for, um, you know, pedestrian safety, like, for example, the fact that they redid the sidewalks a couple of years ago in the center. Right, and so that was a that was a very expensive project. Spring summer twenty twenty. Yeah. What I understand is that they used some of that money. We have another part of the sidewalk in the center that's in horrible shape, which is the mm -hmm. municipal block. Right. Um, so I don't I don't know if people are thinking that that is that making that part of, of my sort of keeping it large is a source to be tapped into if we ever were to do that municipal block, but. I'm comfortable with the committee, you know, making the decisions. This is what the town meeting has decided, you know, put a committee in charge and making these decisions about how the, how the money is spent. There, there, there's lots of reasons why you might want to collect a bunch of money and then spend it, you know, in a big chunk later on. Charlie. So um, I think Annie um, accurately described the fact that this was a, uh, an article in town meeting several years ago that was adopted by town meeting to, to basically uh, sequester these funds for, for these purposes. However, uh, the finance committee, it, and Al Tassi can correct me on this if I'm, my memory isn't serving me well, but I believe the finance committee uh, had an agreement with the town manager and the select board that um, we, we would approve the expenditure in exchange for uh, granting this, uh, what was it called, separate fund, uh, separate funding capability. So while we, while I think we can't say that you can't collect the money, we can we can uh, aid in the direction of how it's spent, positively or negatively. Yeah, and we have a we have an article on the warrant for that, don't we? Every year. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. So yeah. that's what this is. Yeah. It, it's this. I thought yeah, it was and the budget. I thought we were talking about this. Budget, and the budget. Are we also so. talking about the Warren article? Which Warren article number is this? I, mean, I think that, that that the communication can go down to line item expenditures. 36. Yeah, it's article breaks the first. Okay. So, so we, I'm allowing the session about. No, no, no I, I get that. I'm just that. So, so us voting the parking budget doesn't mean we voted the parking benefit district request or whatever. That's going to be voted as Article 36, and we get to vote on Article 36. Yes. 
Okay, can you speak louder again? So we're, we have two votes to take, the first of which is the parking budget, right. and the second of which is the endorsement of the parking benefit district expenditures, which is our vote, which is Article 36. Yes, but I think there's a link here, right? Because how much yes. how much money we're taking out of the... Out of the no, totally. I'm just saying we, we, we aren't giving up on voting on the parking right. district. When we vote the parking budget, we right. vote the parking budget tonight and ask questions, make suggestions to the powers that be about the benefit district. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Just get my ducks in a row. First, trash management. If I recall correctly, what the trash management line was for was to buy big bellies, oh, okay. which was a big yeah. part of of uh, rodent control. Yeah. So I guess they're not. I, you know, it, we, we might want to. Talk to the advisory committee saying, you know, why you stop buying big bellies. But I also wanted to congratulate Michael for a first. <laughs> because if I take the offset in the police budget and the offset in the parking budget, they have them together, it's exactly $114,148, which has never happened. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I was answering a question, Mr. Ash. If you take the $79,250 offset from the police budget, and add it to the 34898 offset to the parking budget, it adds up the total is $114,148, which has never happened before that those records up. So thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Topher. Yeah, what are encumbrances? Uh, I forgot to ask about that. Um, then let's do a payroll. Can you expand it to me, buddy? Is it has to do with me? I beg your word, I didn't go, I, I didn't uh, catch that as we were as we were sitting across from each other. Each other. Maybe you can follow up yeah. on that. Yeah. Other question, John? Yeah, um, who decides on that 114,000, the, uh, the portion of which goes to the police and the portion of which offsets this? I'm just curious, is that a formula or is that just, you know, seems like we want to keep a certain amount of money in the bank, let's throw this much money back to the town? Same guy does a lot of sewer. Okay, so it's discretionary. Just mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, other comments about the parking fund budget? Only one um, small thing you said was that this was a reclassification. It's actually a step increase from five to six salary person. And it must be that it's time for them to get a step increase mm -hmm. so it's um, rather, rather than a, a reclassification to a six. Because I checked last year, so there was no reclassification. So it must have been, they must have been working long enough that they deserve the steps of the reason. And then, and no, uh, and it must have been Madam Treasurer who this spoke. I should get, get my notes down as, as yes. reckless. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Annie. Um, so is it Article 36 something we usually have a discussion with the town manager about? Wasn't this come up on the 13th in that agenda? Um, we know. could, but what would be your questions? Just, I, I'm just remembering what we've done in the past, which is that we have at least made the town manager explain where first about the expenditures. And, and so if we are concerned about money accumulating, we could ask him at that point whether or not there was a plan. I think actually Sandy usually does a presentation on it. We could ask whether or not there's a plan and they're squirreling money away to do some major project. Or whether or not we should be setting some policy around what the minimum and maximum reserve ought to be. Am I making sense? Yeah, those would be my yeah. questions. I don't know if I can be here on the 13th, but I'm happy to write out my question. I'm making a note on that article so that we can ask. Yeah. Awesome. As I recall last year, the information we got from Article 33, mm -hmm. which was the article last year was from Julie and not yeah. doing so presentation. So the yeah. budget director. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
that 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 that's we're voting we're voting revenues and expenditures on on the parking <clears throat> district article, which I think do we do we yeah, have we those numbers? Them. We have some of those numbers for Article Thirty Six or for Article Thirty Six. I think that table. Was I up. think that's what we got. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm just saying if we don't want to vote it as is, I think the discussion with the town manager would be the place to see whether or not we can get some modification. Well, first let's vote on the parking budget. I'll jump. I can answer the question. If you add the parking administrator's salary and the three parking control officers in the police budget and add them together, divided by two, that's where the number came from. You also okay, serve so exactly fifty percent of those four employees. That sounds like a full number. Thank you. So we have, uh, I think we have a recommendation for five seven one zero two, and I believe it was seconded. Any further questions or comments on the the, the parking budget? Department budget. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That's unanimous. So let's talk about the parking benefit district expenditures. Shall we hold off until the manager comes in? I so move. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, all opposed. All right, we will have bring this up when the town manager comes in on thirteen. Well, do we have specific questions we want to ask him? We have a bunch of warrant articles we'll be asking him about. Yeah. And Annie, if you have specific questions. Um, questions. So before he comes in, we can have a discussion about exactly which more articles you want him to be ready to discuss and be prepared that way. All right. Um, let's talk about Article 21. What do people think? A, the first question is, do we take a position? And if so, what that position is? What do people think? Um, well, if I understood it correctly, um, as it exists now, we don't need this article. Um, the cost for the 5% who need it is being paid for by the uh, taxes on the 95 percent um and i think that's sort of what the voters voted for in the this this seems to provide that we could fund it by appropriation or transfer from existing funds which seems to give um the assessors the chance to recommend that we spend more money out of the budget which uh, will make it harder to balance the budget in the future so i think that's a bad thing now, whether the finance committee wants to take a position uh, is up to them. I don't have to worry about balancing the budget specifically anymore. But it seems to me that's the issue. Annie? So I think I have a slightly different interpretation of what Dana is saying they want to be able to do with this article. So if I understood him correctly, what he's saying is in order to offset the, the cost of the circuit breaker funding, we're not allowed to collect that money from non-residential tax, that is through commercial properties or personal property tax. So what we end up with is something like a split rate. And he wants to avoid that by having the ability to funnel it through the overlay, keep the tax rate the same for everybody Okay, and then the differential would get paid by the commercial tax. In other words, the commercial properties wouldn't get a separate rate, they get the same rate. But we're still raising the same amount of money and the same amount of cost flows through the entire budget. 
It just means that rather than saying, we are going to have $750,000 a year of tax we don't collect, and therefore we need to raise the, the, the tax rate for the residential class only, we're going to say that we're budgeting $750,000 in the overlay, and we're collecting that money by having one flat rate for the whole town, but the levy is the same, whichever method he uses. So this really does just give him another tool in the toolbox. But it sounds to me like what he's saying is it's complicated to come up with a split rate. And that's what he's trying to avoid. So I don't know whether or not we should take a position on it or not, but I don't think that it means that either we're robbing Peter to pay Paul or that we're collecting less or something like that. What we did was we agreed to forego a certain amount of property tax to cover this circuit. Or something like that. Not the barn and themselves. Yeah, yeah. In other words, I'm sorry, I think you're right, Josh. What we agreed to do was to shift the burden of this from senior citizens on a fixed income to everybody else. What he wants to do is not just shift it to the rest of us in the residential class, but also shift it to the commercial class. And he can only do that through this other funding mechanism. But he's not to saying that that's what he's going to do. He's not saying that's what he's going to do. He's saying that if I had this as a tool, A, less work, less complicated calculations on a split rate, and B, I'm shifting it fairly. I'm not just putting it all on the residential rate payers, although we are 95% of the tax base, so big deal. You know, it's not going to save us a lot, but we are shifting some of it to the commercial rate payers and the personal property tax rate payers by this mechanism. So it's very arcane and it's hard to understand. And I hope I got that right. <laughs> but um, that's what I what I heard. Um, Michael, then Josh, and then Charlie. I think you know you, you really put your finger on the question here. Why would it be better? And I think I heard it asked four times. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> yes, it provide a little bit more flexibility. We're moving. We're moving the burden to recoup whatever it is we give in and rebate from 95% of, of the tax on to 100% minimal difference there. But I think what I heard most most repeatedly was that it's good to have a single tax rate. Yeah. And then I would ask why? Yeah, outside of tradition, outside of it's easy to understand. I think what Dana was saying is that the, the actual work to be sure that the split rate is accurate and so on and so forth is what he's trying to avoid. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so you got a, they got a set of rate. Um, I, I they got a set two. I don't inherently believe the two is twice the work or or ten percent more work. But I, we're not the ones who know Dana is the one who knows. I think the avoidance of wanting to have two tax rates is the avoidance of drawing more attention to the fact that if we give money to them, we got to get it from those. I don't think so. Think I really think it's being concerned about the, the workload. All right. It's part of it. Uh, Josh. Um, it seems to me that it's kind of a simple spreadsheet with dollars amount. You know, I don't know. Well, I guess we Kind of building on that, it would be very helpful to me, I think, since there's general confusion. If you could just give us a, a, a simple model that kind of plays out. This is option A, this is option B, this is where the money comes from, this is how it all ties out. It's not decreasing our total expenses or anything like that, or, or decreasing our total revenue, because we're not really all understanding it the same way. And it's, it's not that many different numbers to lay out. So I, I would prefer to pay a little weight to get a document like that from him. And I think town meeting would also appreciate that. Sure. Well, <clears throat> I think uh, I'm concerned about what happens to the overlay reserve here. Uh, if we're taking money out uh, to cover this expense. And it seems to me that if the residential tax rate is fixed, Don't we have to, if, if the overlay reserve is, is 
sort of in a way, don't we have to uh, reduce town expenses? Not, not if you see the funding of the circuit breaker as an expense, which we have anyways. It's just how does it? So this is a new circuit breaker. This is a new a new expense. Yes. So. Um, You know, we have to have a certain balance uh -huh. in the overlay reserve every yeah. year, right? I mean, it, it changes from year to year, but you've got to have enough to cover the liabilities. So if we if we work if we start taking money out of there, and we get to the point where we're not covering liabilities, and I'm just speaking hypothetically here, um, then and and we're keeping the the tax rate. I mean, I'm, I'm Maybe I'm a little confused on what it means to keep the tax rate the same, but, but if the tax rate is fixed, then you've got to you've got to lower the expenses in the town. Yeah, I think this has to do with how we do math on the free cash sheet. We mentioned at some point he's not reducing the tax rate; he's reducing the value of the ones who get the right. So you can have one tax rate. But you're adjusting the values. I'm not quite sure how that would work. But if well, the residential rate goes up in Nickel, then you got to split rate. That's not what split. 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 And I also heard that he said he's expecting, I thought his word was rarely to use the overlay. Yeah. yeah. So my, my question, and if anyone has an answer, if that's the case, yeah, maybe we why do we need, why do we, what's the purpose of this if it's, if it's intended to be used? Really, for the reason I think Charlie points out, which is it can't be sustained by using the overlay. And, and well, then, why does he have in there, or he doesn't restrict it to the overlay in the language of the of the article? He has come, come, basically to take it out of the mm -hmm. overhead stabilization fund. Or it, to me, it's this is opacity at work. Jennifer, can I press power up on the side? Um, so I think my confusion goes to Annie's question about is it partially the overlay and partially a change to the tax? I, I, I guess what I like, he did say it would be very small coming out of the overlay. It's 750,000. Isn't it small in my mind? Right. Well, we we sometimes only add five or six hundred thousand to the overlay, so yeah. you could you could pretty much start eating into the overlay reserve very quickly. Right. I mean, we would have to budget more into the overlay. No. I think it's just a bookkeeping. Well, then, but then you're you're gonna. That's inappropriate. I think you need to have some models. I think Josh is. Yeah, right. I think Josh is right. I think we need a model. Um, I agree. <laughs> Who thinks I'm right? <laughs> <laughs> I think right, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> On this one. Josh and I have history, your personal thing. Uh, other questions, comments? Did he give an estimate towards the beginning of, of the total cost of this? Yes. Yeah. $736,000. Although I would say the one number I would keep in my head is the 1%. The 1% of the tax base. because Yeah, but the tax is already decided for that. That's you know, so we are very that. decided for what cost. Well, I mean, we are voted for the program. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, it's one yeah. percent, is that's that's the law. Yeah. So, it's the math. so that's which, the cap. by my math, it could be upwards to 1.5 million because one percent after 150 million is 1.5 million. So, either way, that's the number that would stick in my head. It can't get worse than that, or it can't get more generous than that, right? Grant, um, well, I was a little, um, uh. I think I think his estimates would uh, be gracious and kind of vague. Um, he su suspects that 750 qualify. I didn't ask how many people they were budgeting or uh, expecting to apply, which would give us uh, a budgeted number for the first year. I don't just so, and that's not taking into consideration the fact that they're doubling it. So that's why <clears throat> Josh. I had a great suggestion <laughs> because we'd like to have. I'd like to see something mm -hmm. put in there that isn't so vague. Uh, 
um, I don't know if he left those papers that went passed around yeah. very quickly. Yeah, are they still are some, here? Yeah. Because at least one of them had a little bit better numbers on it of how many people, because they were able to look at the number of people who were simply qualified to be state circuit breaker. Right. So that is a firm number for this year, right? And well, so that's going to apply if they apply. We don't, don't, don't know, know what they're currently getting from the state. So then, but at least I didn't get that gives your starting point. I was just thinking, you have a little bit more uh, precise of an estimate than what he was saying. Is it 744 yeah. applications? And the average was $1,063 in 2020. Yeah. One, one thing we're not going to clarity on is what the select board is going to do, right? The select board right. can vote 50%, 100%, right. 200%. Right. Right. That, <laughs> so that's we're never going to get exact numbers. Right. We're we're gonna, we have no idea. As a rule of thumb here. We have no idea what they select board is going to do. Not more than 1%. Not more than 1%, right? Yeah. Not more than 1% of the budget, not more than 200% of the exactly. Right. We have, a, right. we have a. So this definitely narrows it down. Yeah. Not no. reality. <laughs> <laughs> he can't give us more clarity. It, it does narrow it down. I mean, those are serious caps, and they can't spend ten million dollars on yes. it. So, um, so then, what would your estimate be the first year expensive people fund? My my estimate would be that probably it's the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. It'll probably be similar in twenty twenty one. Although I suppose it might go up because more people are eligible. Uh -huh. But also, from experience on the select board, a lot of people who are eligible don't apply. But that's right. Right. That's so, that's my point. Yeah. yeah, but remember, no matter how many apply, it can't be more than one percent of the budget. Because I, the select board is going to have the final decision. Like, and they're going to have the final like decision. Like five hundred, yeah. you know, everybody comes out and applies for this thing, they can just say, okay, now it's down five percent, yeah, ten percent, or eleven exactly. percent. You see that? That's what I like about Josh's mm. Josh's suggestions mm -hmm. that Mom. you take a couple of data points. All right, so then you take the one percent. Well, then you take the half of that. But let's yeah. say that nobody's going to understand it, and they're not going to apply. So let's take awesome. three points, and then you have something to work with. But you uh, could then. I'll just. It, is it, I'm looking at the FY 2024 uh, uh, tax recap, and it's not in there. Is this not been used yet, or is it mm -hmm. hidden someplace? Mm -hmm. no, it was all there's a page that says residential exemption. Because it, it didn't. It, well, there's the there's the abatements of things, but no, no, there's a page that says residential exemption. Do you see how it's built into the into the levy limit? Into the uh, recap? Oh, that's a residential. Exemption. I don't see anything like seven hundred fifty thousand. The exemptions I think are the like at churches and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The three ABC types. Other questions, comments? Yeah, I I, I don't want to pass this just so, you know, the Board of Assessors has to do less work. Uh, no, $750,000 is a lot of money. They can pay a lot. Oh, that's already been said. Yeah, that's been yeah. said. But if, if we're using the overlay, you know, that, that's, that's a revenue, in effect, a revenue source. Something's going to have to be cut if we just, you know, raise it within it and drop the uh, values of the 5%, then the others pick it up. I have to see the chart, but yeah. I think well, this is why we said the before, model. we have yeah. to, that would force us to reduce the expenditures yeah. in the town. Mm -hmm. so, so can I I'd be happy to take that out of school, but <laughs> we'd be fast. <laughs> 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 <That's laughs> is anyone who has not spoken yet please speak for Josh and Annie. Yeah. yeah, I was actually just <clears throat> saying it, it's conceivable to me that what you were saying is we would raise the extra money for the uniform tax rate on both residents, commercial, get all the total dollars, and maybe allocate more into overlay and then take it back out again. And it's kind of like a bookkeeping tax mm -hmm. state law kind of thing as opposed to a dollar and cents thing. It's conceivable to me that that's what you're proposing, but until we see something a little more concrete, since he should be a numbers guy, and that's what we are. That's what I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm going to propose that we not vote on this tonight, that we ask Dana for a model, 
And then based on that model, we see whether or not we feel more comfortable with this. But my readers room is not comfortable. And what, what's so, the what's the what's what are we asking him to model? We're asking him to model well if, Josh, you can, you can tell me if you think I'm different. We're asking him to model what would be what would the overlay look like in the budget and what would the tax rate be? And how is that different from what would happen if he didn't have this tool? Like, show us the two examples. So, have the monitoring people respond on how helpful. We need, uh, I think we should just ask him for the a model with a, with a uh, different tax rate for commercial. Presidential. Right. That would be there's three actually, right? Well, there would be that would be model. There'd be an A model, which is it's an even tax rate, and I'm taking this money out of the overlay. And here's what the budget would look like, and here's what the tax rate is. And there's a B model, which is residential rate, commercial rate, no change in the overlay. But they like the assessors would have to I recommend to the selectmen next year. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the main point of that we need to know that I think if, if you is whether you're right that that were they to take it out of the assessor that money has to come out of the budget someplace, yeah. right? Yeah. The overlay, right? Um, versus if it's done by having these two different rates, <clears throat> is it just sort of an extra addition that somehow it skirts proposition two and a half so that the it doesn't. So, so then the question is: Is there is there a difference? Yeah, yeah, exactly. that's the question. That's the yeah, that's a real asking. question. We we don't need them to model what the select board does fifty percent, hundred percent. We're there. That's not our decision. We, we just need to know, need to know yeah. is there any difference in right. how much money is available for everything else? Yeah, on these two models. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. he basically said yes. He wasn't. No, he didn't, he didn't say yes. No, is what mm -hmm. he sort of said. So I don't think we have clarity. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was there some point about does the overlay does the overlay involve raising like the you know, commercial tax rate a little bit? So in other words, what? Yeah. So so that's where the additional money comes. From. Mm -hmm. you, you know, in other words, keep everyone's you know, everyone's property tax uh, uniform. These seniors get some money back, mm -hmm. and then that that additional money that they get back, you pull it from the overlay. Which, I mean, I'm not that familiar with, but Sounds like he can increase the tax on the overlay. He can increase the tax on the commercial base. Well, yeah, that's, well, that, that's well, the well, third well, option that I mentioned. It's just an appropriation. That's that's a uh, third option. We don't have two different tax rates. We only have one. Right. But this would, in in essence, be two different tax rates where the residential rate payers are paying a higher tax than the commercial. Right? Yeah. Usually, what we're considering is should we raise the commercial and that's shift that. to them and we. Don't do that. So I don't know whether or not. That's why I need to see the numbers. Right, right. Yeah, you need to see the numbers. Yeah, because if you didn't do that, you'd have a lower test TAV, mm -hmm. which would increase the rate across the board. So everybody's going to increase. We also should. Because you let me do the second. I think we should also consider, if we're going to consider this article, that we we restrict their. Flexibility. If, if, if it turns out that there's no impact, then we restrict their flexibility to deal with the overlay, not any other fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. Who has the assessor's point of view? Would you like to ask for this modeling? Thank you. If you have any questions, ask Josh. <laughs> Happy to help. Somebody does for a living. And when we get that, we can take it, take it up again. And so figure out what we want to do. All right. So that ends it for 21 right now. Does anyone have any follow-up information from last week's? Um, Rebecca? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the field. Yes. Question. Yes. So um, I exchanged some emails with Joe Connolly, and if you'd like to read them from there, 
priority, they're added to the SharePoint under the Recreation Department um, item. So um, I asked him three questions that had come up. One was, how much do we currently take in from permit fees? Um, because our budget book suggested something like 21,000, right. but we was suggesting something more like 70. Um, so the answer to that question was that um, in 2023, it was in fact $69,950. It's been fluctuating some years, it's been a little higher, but so yes, it is more like Dean's estimate of 70,000. And so then the question was, where is that currently going from the permit fees? Um, so he said that if, if they think of it as $10 per player, that they allocate $60 towards <coughs> a field perk contract, $2.75, for the portable restrooms and a dollar twenty-five toward field administration. So that dollar twenty-five per user is the amount that we see in the rec department budget that the rec department keeps, um, basically because he said they do all of the scheduling um, and the administration. So the rec department portion only reflects the amount that they keep for the. Administration, it does not reflect the portable restrooms. So the amount that they take out for portable restrooms, which has fluctuated based on their contract, but is roughly twenty thousand, um, comes out of his field account, which does not appear in this. Um, and then the remainder, he said, is what they get to do. And so, and I had a, a follow up um, emails with Mike and. He later said that yes, they do contribute something, just much less than they had in the past. Yes, I. We had asked him whether they were contributing anything. He had said no at one point. So I, that could have been my problem, misunderstanding that. But but he clarified that they do contribute. It's not much to do. Yes. So, um, the the learning have any sense of how much we're doing? Well, we do from these numbers, not from Mike, but um, it sounds like they're giving. Um, thirty nine thousand three hundred and ten in twenty twenty three, and but it's it's much more expensive to maintain the field, right? So the GW is, is spending over a hundred thousand. But that's not what's in the field maintenance budget. That's how much GW is spending in their, their field maintenance budget. You remember? Oh, in, in terms of the actual. Oh, the actual. In terms of the budget. Yeah, budget. No, budget's way too low. That's why I want to share things out over. Budget numbers don't reflect the actuals that we're ever spending. No. That's what I, that's, <laughs> so they were originally wanting to switch 20,000, it was a mistake. And I was suggesting switching 10 more thousand just to make that budget number closer to what they were actually spending. Sure. So how much money out of that $10 goes to DPW for field maintenance? $6. $6. So here's, so you either think of it as $6 out of the 10, or this is on the SharePoint, if anyone would like to refer to it. If you're in the SharePoint, it's the yellow table. So he says they give TBW $39,310 in 2023. Right. What budget line is that? Pardon me? What budget line is that? What's the line number? It does, I do not see it on a line. There's not a line that matches that. He says it crosses seasons or it crosses fiscal years. Yeah, that doesn't kind of like that. Yeah, I don't like that either. So yeah. we have we have a DPW budget that doesn't actually reflect how much DPW spends. Yes. We have a park and rec budget that indicates nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. I think uh, well, we also, well, yeah. Well, I guess my question would be the difference between the sixty nine thousand and the twenty thousand, where is that? What line so, is that in? Right, so they bring in 69,000, they have 20,000 in field permit fees. It's revolving. Okay, so he's got a budget that he uses, and then there's this, which doesn't really relate to anything. Doesn't match. Okay. Yeah. That's um, not good. Which is what was sort of one of the philosophical complaints is that he's got all these other numbers, but they're not in here. Right. All right. So they're in the actuals because they spent 100,000. Right, but not in the rec departments. Right, because right. the rec department is the people who are collecting. Is it possible that the DPW actuals reflect spending yeah. their budget plus the money they got from REC? That's a good question. It would be great to know. That is a good question. Because yeah. uh -huh. yeah. if they get 60 a year yeah. plus the 39, yeah. there's 100 yeah. grand. Yeah. Yeah. But it should be written on that standard. 
right? Yeah. <laughs> Or at least okay. footnote or something. Yep, yep. yep. Okay. So I love that. Yep. Um, so I, there was also some discussion about the quality of the fields. Um, when I say that something's not done perfectly, Mike gets very technical mm -hmm. about his people and his. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, basically, his claim is that it's not a money issue, it's a overuse issue, and that towns that have better fields. Have proportionally less use on those fields. Which um, Joe Connolly agrees with. Right, and which John Connolly goes with as well. Um, and so so just throwing more money in it isn't going to make our fields more beautiful. We could reside them, but then we no one could play in it for a month or two. So two years. They're wrong. Two, part, two years, right. So 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 that's 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 well, why doesn't the finance committee just recommend we tear up the fields and put in all artificial? Well, ah, what well. oh, yeah, is a to this. Let's <laughs> ball one dirt. So, as I understand, <laughs> <laughs> as I understand, is, 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 is going to be capital money for, for a study. For a study, right, right. But that may not so make the actual deal better if they're just being used a lot too much. But I don't know so if I make the side area better yes. or. Yeah. Um, Charlie and then Rebecca. Uh, so I'm going to help Rebecca out here because I have a question for us. So, so could, could you please explain? Uh, I'm still back on this $70,000 revenue um, for the fields. Looking at the at the uh, recreation department uh, enterprise fund, yeah. where yeah. is the $70,000? So that, that, is, that is, was not. Um, that is, was very unsatisfying to me, right? Um, could you remind me of the page, please? Uh, yeah, you know, just remove those pages. Yeah, so, right, so this is what is unsatisfying, is that he takes in the permit, and then um, if you look at the revenue items that are <clears throat> 4421, 4422, and 4423, those are permit fees that total $21,000. $500? Yes. Which is dramatically less than 70000 So that represents only a small portion of what they actually take in first. So the where rest, does that money go? He has a revolving funds that he uses to pay. Outside of this, he uses it to pay for the porta potties. And the porta potties, the revenue that covers the porta potties does not appear on here, nor do the expenses. Whoa. <laughs> so how can we have something revolving? What's the revolving thing for? I, I, I wasn't aware it existed until we had this. Um, the bucket of money. Yeah, I'm sorry. So you can't have a revolving fund that doesn't show up in the <laughs> You see, it's, it's a bucket of money under his desk. Oh, it's probably in the selectman's report. They report on revolving funds. Uh, well, we should check that. Well, you know, <laughs> I think we should reject the budget, just not, not because of anything that we recognize, but it's just because they got. They should start recording what's actually going on. So where okay. he said that it went, um, again, his email is, is in the SharePoint if you want the specific language, but he said, I asked him, where where does that show up? If you're getting 70,000, where? I don't see the line item. And where are you paying for the portable toilets because I don't see the line items. And his response was, it's in the field fee account. Um, Can we ask him for his sure. records? OK. Let's ask him for his records. So, because apparently that's completely different than what we have. We're yeah. talking about. So, let's ask him for his records. Okay. Of all the accounts that he has. Yeah. Maybe he's saving yeah. more than a million dollars. Maybe it's two million. <laughs> well, that's my other um, response. The other part of his email um, is the third part of my question. Let's let it come up at the meeting. Given that the fields are apparently poor condition and they're only charging ten dollars per user, how much money would he like to make the field more appropriate, and how much would that cost? Um, and so his response to that was the same as Jeff yeah, said that we've heard from DPW, which is that it's overuse. Um, he said our fees have been the same for over ten years. Any increase in the field fees will just be passed on to Arlington residents through their organization. Um, mm -hmm. He seems reluctant to do that. I think we were hearing at the finance committee that perhaps that would be appropriate to yeah. pass them on to the residents of the organization. Is, is Dean here? No, no he seemed to think that people were ready to accept an increase. Yeah. 
But that wouldn't help the field. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, would uh, would an increase in money actually help the fields, or would a decrease in use? That's right. That's decrease in use for fields or for mental improvement. Would you raise the money so much that well, people don't use it? Well, right. <laughs> right. 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 the increase in fees would have to be or, very no, 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 <laughs> Well, right. let's just knuckle the preschool. No, no, raise it so much. Surge price. Hundreds of dollars. So the math well, aside, uh, that's that's the thing is growing money, putting more money isn't you know other than other, if we're building more fields or something. But I mean, it doesn't really solve the problem. That's the plan. You're increasing your increase isn't going to solve the problem field. So it's that's kind of, it. If we put a deck over the Russell Common lot and put a field on it. So I, it, it seems to me that after the study, mm -hmm. right? It, that that might be the, the time to examine use of fees. Uh, to to defray the cost of what may be building a new field somewhere. Uh, I know it's politically um, a non-starter to take a field out of commission. Mm -hmm. Just there's just too much. You, you have to say no to these organizations that we don't that well, Conley doesn't want to. Yeah. The, the, the ball field at Robbins Farm Park was taken out for two years. Yeah, yeah. they and the soccer. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's not a it's not it's not a happy thing. It's not a happy thing. But right. they do it. They will not. The but... So let's see if we can get better information from Joe Thomas records, and Jennifer will be keep talking. Yeah, I, I will. I will definitely get started. Yeah, yeah. So far. Yeah, the system is going to be out for the budget. We might. Good. Tonight, you know. Can I open another can of worms about direct budget? <laughs> Oops, go ahead. Did we have a conversation about this idea of fining the preschools for using the playgrounds? <laughs> yeah. Did you have this one on a day I wasn't here? No, no. What is, what is so talking about being penny wise and pound? <laughs> So there is an initiative going on within the rec department that probably comes from people complaining that nursery school, preschools, daycares that use the toddler playgrounds or the Nonagoo Rocks Park to do some, you know, habitat analysis, you know, whatever you do with kids in that area, they should be charged fees for their use. Go ahead. Oh, are you, wait, wait, are you, are you, are you finished? So my question is, as because it's it's about money, shouldn't this be something we make a recommendation to the rec department about? Rebecca? So separately from our finance committee discussions with Joe Connolly, but just what Joe Connolly publicly said was that right now what they're doing is they're asking for, they're not charging anything, but they're asking the daycares and preschools to apply for a free permit that will just let them keep track of how many kids are using the playground at what time. And then based on that, they may set a, a charge in the future. Um, it is currently the case that, for example, Leslie Ellis, which is right next to the town park, Leslie Ellis pays because you know they, they make heavy use of that park. So it's not an unheard of thing. But before it becomes a finance committee issue of them actually taking revenue in, that's not where they are right now. They're oh, just collecting data. So, so part of the reason I'm interested in discussing it now is the collecting of data costs money. It costs time for the staff to analyze it. It costs time and money to collect it. And so um, I don't have a problem with them collecting the data and figuring things out. As long as the data includes things like what percentage of the kids already live in Arlington or whose parents work in Arlington. Um, because the reality is if, if both spouses didn't have to work, those spouses would be taking these kids to the park rather than the caretakers. Yep. And so there would actually be more adults at the park, which would potentially create more use to the park. Yeah. And they do have, um, they do already issue permits that you do have to pay for if you want to hold like a picnic or a birthday party. Like we always used to hold our little kids' birthday parties at the park, and it was twenty five dollars. 
and, and every single time you do it, you have to apply for a permit. So I'm not sure that a permit that reflects annual use is gonna have that much more work for them that, you know, every single picnic and every single birthday party, you know, they're already issuing permits. That when you have a permit, you have exclusive use of the facility. Mm -hmm. I've had that. Not I've had birthday party permits still. Yeah. Okay. Well, and birthday party permits are not just for zero to four year olds. Mm -hmm. They're for a much larger group and that often include adults mm -hmm. because the parents often stay at those parties. So the wear and tear is significantly greater mm -hmm. than zero to four year olds and their two to three caregivers. I would think that this would be included in that field study, I would hope. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as your point of it costs no work, you know, the rec department hasn't been asking for more money to do this. So I don't think we need to worry about it now. Michael, you had your hand up in the middle. I'd like to see what model of, of determining who gets charged would be, even while the data is being collected. Would it be similar to the model of having you know, a birthday party, a single time event, like like some of the, uh, the, the picnic and party spaces at the Ritz, you get you get exclusive use and control of that for a certain number of hours, or is it or is it going to be much more diffuse than that? You're used you're here regularly, perhaps not to the exclusion of other users at the same time, but you are here regularly. Um, there's, there's some bad, no. The rumor I heard was that some residents went. And we're told by the preschool group, you can't, this is ours. And that ignited the discussion. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know what we look at going forward as, as the policy for doing this. Why, why, why are we doing this? I'll test it. <clears throat> uh, how much of the, the, the rental or permit fees are gotten from adult leagues um, as opposed to children? Because a, a 40 pound child playing soccer, the, the grass is hardly going to notice it, that the person's there. You get a 180 pound, you know, a 20 year old pounding down there playing soccer, that's really going to tear the heck out of the field. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that is the issue about Rebecca. Yeah, well, well, we can, we, we can switch back and forth. Right. Rebecca, we're talking the field. Right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. One, one, one at a time, Rebecca. The, the discussion about nursery schools was about the playgrounds rather than the fields, but this $10,000 um, is currently in the budget, which we have concerns about. But the budget currently reflects $10,000 for picnics and special event permits revenue. So they, they budget taking in $10,000 for picnics and special events. Which is which is not field use. You mean the they field, take hundred thousand and field... bounce with into that little revolving <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. I see where this is headed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, uh, Al does bring up a good point. Do they for the fields, do they charge different for adult leagues versus children leagues? I did not ask. Either. Well, when you ask him for his records, records, maybe you can ask yes. that question. <laughs> And do we want to be judging recurrent but non-exclusive uses of so I think I, I think so right now, right now we want to get wrap our hands around the budget. Mm -hmm. Policy and future charges, I think is beyond is the next step after that. But right now, I think we need to figure out what's going on in the rec department budget and how that is impacting the DPW budget. Mm -hmm. Then I think we can have a session maybe about user fees and whether they're adequate or not, with the with the knowledge that there's there's going to be a study that capital planning is going to be funding on presumably this very day. Right. Soon too, right? 2026 budget, I think there's money for this study. So all right, thank you. Getting that information for us. Um, it was all Rebecca. She mentioned it all the way. I can't take that. All right. So we will um, again. We'll postpone DPW. We will. Um,
wait until we get information from Parks and Rec. Um, I think that's all we have right now for budgets. We have the committees and commissions. Yeah, let's see if we can knock off a few committees and commissions. Let's start with those committees that are asking for less money. Okay. So first is um, Envision Arlington. And I will pull up their note. Um, yes, it's under um, it's under FY twenty five budgets and then Envision Arlington. So last year they got three thousand and they're looking for fifteen hundred, correct? Yes. Um, so it was approval. This is a motion to approve request for fifteen hundred. Hundred was seconded. Any questions, comments? I'm sure. Which envision Arlington? We are voting to give them fifteen hundred, which is a fifty percent decrease from last year. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Yes. And then the next um, decrease is uh, Open Space Committee. And last year they got 2,000, and I understand they're looking for 1,000 this year. Yes. I, Al Jones. Uh, I'm, I'm going to recuse from the vote because, like, my last name is down there. Um, but the, the, the re I just want to explain the reason is that every every so many years they have to do an open space report. And the next time that comes around, they can ask for more money. Mm -hmm. But when they're not doing a report, they can draw it down. Okay. You haven't read the current open space report is tremendous. It's like a couple hundred pages and it's really, really good. When was it issued? Um, mm -hmm. well, the last open space report? Yeah, it was just approved last year. So it's pretty fresh, 2022, I think. Okay, all right. All right, so is there a motion? Ooh. Second? Second. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. All right. Thirteen four. Any opposed? And abstentions. One abstention. All right. Next up, we have. Well, we could go in alphabetical order. We could also do the smaller budgets. If that would be less discussion. Um, let's. Who, who is asking for? Let's go with. Um, let's do Harry Barber. Okay. And they are asking for level funding. Yes. Which is seventy five hundred. No move. Second. Any discussion? Next year, I'm going to ask Council on Aging not to put the article in. Yeah. Until the end of but what we might want to do is expand this our commissions and committees article to specifically list them in there. Mm -hmm. Might give them comfort. We have one less article to deal with. Yeah. All right. It, it, the motion has been seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. What? We also have, um, let's see here now. We could do Historic Districts Commission. Yes. 
and they are asking 6,000 level funding. Commission or the districts? So this is the historic districts commission, not the historical commission. So this is the one where there's like the Broadway and like okay. two others. All right, and they are asking for six thousand, which is what they got last year. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? Yeah. I'm not sure actually if this is the right budget, but I remember somebody came in last year and said they were going to send notices to every historically significant house. Is that the historic commission? That's not that. I one. feel like it was the other one. The, the other one. The other one was Joanne Preston and okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, I never got a notice. I do. Well, I'm sure this is being asked. I'm not sure you're all right. Yes, all right. We have a motion for six thousand dollars to the historic districts commission. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, next up we have the historical commission. Um, so first, so just a note there, something came in that was from Mike Gervais, and that had an increase request. But I got clarification from Joanne Preston that he is not a co-chair and that we should um, use her budget. So the, the top thing that's in the Excuse historical commission. <laughs> Joanne Robinson. Joanne Robinson. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Scare me for a minute. Okay. Yeah. So um, so they're looking for level funding at 8700 right? So the, the other thing that he sent does have more detail, but it, they're not act, asking for a, an increase. All right, is there a motion? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Is there a motion for 8700? No. Second. Second. All right, all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Any opposed? Yes. Sorry, give me one sec. They said they actually sent it. Um, LGBT? Yes. Um, so they're looking for level funding at 4,000. And um, we have an Excel that you can put it, it's, okay, it's really small. Um, but I can summarize here as I scroll through. Everyone yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So how much was that? Um even funding at four thousand okay. dollars. Um any questions? So far. Well, I just have a question. Um <clears throat> it's a town committee. Why is it a separate website and separate URL and a separate domain rather than just being like part of the town website? The town website's very flexible with a gatekeeper who tries to keep it accurate, things that measure the town, whereas all a lot of committees and commissions and whatever put up their own just to have the flexibility to be able to respond quickly with new information and have better formatting and things like that. So uh, there are a lot of independent websites. Even the fire department has their own website. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Second. There's second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, next up, we have open. Oh, no, we did that. Um, no, scenic byways coming in. Semi centennials coming in. Um, so, well, okay. So, yeah. So, the scenic byway, semi. Quincentennial and Arlington Tourism and Economic Development, they're all coming in on the 18th to talk about the Arlington 250, which is what they're calling themselves now. Um, so let's so, put those budgets off until then. Okay. Transportation Advisory Committee. What's up next? Level? Yes. So it's level at um, 2000. Um, move approval. Second. Any question? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
And then um, we already voted on the uh, zero waste um, committee. However, I just wanna note that they have not sent us a budget, but um, Charlotte Milan is out until tomorrow. So it's possible that that is what we need for the budget, but we did already vote that um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, so um, can you touch base with her between now and Monday? Yeah. And I'll follow up with her tomorrow. Yeah. And we can, if we can reconsider this on Monday if we feel like we want to do our share. Okay. And then um, just as a other, so um, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Um, so those are the bigger budget right. ones. They're looking for level funding at 35,000. And did they send us something? They did. And can you make me add to arts and culture? Um, any, any... I do not. It's, it's level funded and it looks to me like their usual um, you know, estimates of revenue and I mean, they kind of have this down to a science now. So I, I think this is fine. Questions mm -hmm. of the arts and culture. <clears throat> Are there any questions? I right, see a motion to approve the budget request at 35000 for Arlington um, Arts and Culture. I do. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And then, um, so Commission on Disability, um, Sophie's been trying to get in contact with them. I just was looking at minutes from the select board and it looks like they had two new folks joining like last month and Community Preservation Act, they're coming in on the 18th. Conservation Committee and Water Bodies coming in on the 18th. And, um, and then Human Rights Commission, they're looking for an increase. Um, we received their budget and they're coming in on the 4th, so on Monday. So they're coming in right after the libraries. I don't know if we're doing a class. Yeah, so the libraries then, um, you're not expecting anyone to come to that, right? No, no, no. Okay, cool, yeah. So it'll be the libraries, it'll be um, Human Rights Commission, and then it will be reclass. And you're able to do human resources that day. Yeah. Well. yeah. So what day is the library? Monday, Monday on the 4th. Next Monday. But did everyone get that on Monday? We're going to talk about the library rebuild, reclass, human resources, and then the human rights commission. And then maybe we'll have some more information about Parks and Rec, and maybe we can finish some of the yeah, and we have ways to show you. And then on Wednesday, the sixth, that will be capital planning. Um and then followed by Minuteman on the 11th, and the town manager will be in on the 13th. And um, I'm hoping that you could do insurance on the 20th. 20th. Yes, did right. I not say yes? Yes. You did, I just wanted to clarify. Yes. All right. So health insurance and water and sewer on the 20th? The, yeah. the people are nodding who will- Yeah, well, I spoke about yeah, uh, if, if if they have the numbers, of course. I have a note that it may not come out until the 21st. Oh, yes, yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Actually, he said the 20th. But... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's always that. If they just get the numbers on the 20th, I don't think it's possible to do the finance committee right now. I'll talk to her. We're meeting with her tomorrow morning, so I'll talk to her tomorrow and say, so what's going on with the insurance numbers? We don't know until they get it. I mean, no. that's, yeah. It's really, you know, if, if we can't do it, do it the 20th, we'll have to do it after the school's finish on the 20th. Yeah. Um, and depending on what else we have to deal with, I might suspend the Mary Roman rule on the 25th to finish our business. Mm -hmm. So that the board oh, is scary. Know that. What, what is that? The end at 10 o'clock. Yeah. 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 Bring your jammies. Water sewer tank. Um, does anyone have anything else <laughs> that they want to bring up tonight? Um, composting. 
Yeah, so it is not happened yet. Um, so um, <coughs> the students disappeared, which was appropriate, and they weren't going to deal with it. Um, the the um, although there is one student still interested in being an alternate, um, the we changed our composting company to Blackbird. And that's a little more expensive. And so there's been a question of how that looks. Also, Charlie's hoping to use some state resources to help figure out what the project looks like to contact businesses and to get outreach. So they hope to spend that money, but they have not. I would not be surprised if there were some questions about that. Um, right. Right. Yeah. So we would have, yes, yeah, so I'll just prepare them for that. Yeah. I'll come up with a little better scale. Yeah, I mean, I mean that was the what I was given, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah if, if you, if you, you know, maybe Carolyn and Jennifer, you could prepare and then you can prepare yeah. a nice statement. Yeah. Um, so that, you yeah. Can, Carolyn, it's not a better statement. Uh, yeah, strong, I don't want to. It's a stronger narrative. Stronger <laughs> narrative. <laughs> stronger narrative. Yeah, are you trying to get around language implications? Yeah. For the record. <laughs> for the record. Oh, and also for the record, there's no timeline in the Mario Rocks clause. No, but they don't want to explore. It's a, you know, fit of virtue, they took it out. Right. right. Took it out. It was such a mess. It was a real mess. Dangerous. Um, <laughs> uh, so you want a narrative coming from the finance committee, or you want Charlotte no, I just, to prevent? I, I, I just want us and Charlotte, Charlotte to be okay. prepared. Okay. Like, okay. okay, if there's a question, yeah, um, um, I would be surprised. Yeah, if, right. If it's it's a very good question. So, um, okay. some something, something nice. Yeah, um, but honest and yeah. and. Uh, and most importantly, we have not spent that money. Yeah. Right. We have not spent right. Anything else? Could we ask? Um, or do you know what, what the status is on the Capital Planning Committee report? I know Daryl, I don't know if he's still Darryl's kind of with us, but Daryl, you can, can check in with them. We're, okay. we're finalizing it uh, tomorrow night, and it should be sent over um, sometime Friday. Awesome. Great. Perfect. All right. You heard it from God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, All right. We're adjourned. Thank you.